Are you suffering from COVID anxiety? Are you worried about the numbers going higher and you're watching the news and you're wondering about where it's going to go and how we're going to deal with it? Keep watching. Hi, my name's Christine L. Conroy. Welcome to Happy Stuff and Fun, a channel for women who are getting happy, living longer and growing younger. First of all, I do hope my thumbnail or the text on my thumbnail didn't alarm you. I will be putting your mind at ease. This is a subject that's coming up all the time. People are looking at statistics and becoming very concerned about COVID. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, there are some cold, cold facts coming out of recent research that we have to address or that I want to talk about. And the first one is that scientists now believe or do not believe that we're going to be able to achieve herd immunity, which was something that was being talked about a while ago, that we were going to get to a point where we would have herd immunity. Now they don't believe that's going to happen thanks to uh, the Delta variant and how quickly that took hold. Um, so herd immunity is now uh, a, a myth as I read. Um, scientists believe now that we are all going to be exposed to coronavirus, hence the text on my thumbnail. Um, we're going to be exposed to coronavirus. I'm going to get it and there's a good chance you're going to get it too. Stay with me. Don't click off just yet. Um, they believe, scientists believe, and I'm going to leave all my information. Before I continue, let me just say I'm not qualified. I'm not a doctor. I do read the research and um, I'll leave my information down below for you to check out yourself. All I can really do on a video like this is to talk about um, myself and, and how my family is uh, dealing with the ongoing threat of coronavirus uh, and then um, you can take from that what you will. Um, I will suggest various things but of course I can't tell you. Uh, you have to listen and research and do your own thing and make your own mind up, but be well informed about the situation. That's the key, of course. Now, so the coronavirus um, then, scientists now believe, is going to become endemic. Now, just let me, just in case you're wondering, because it can be confusing, pandemic, endemic, and epidemic, uh, let me just put up here what the differences are. So an epidemic is when a disease is actively spreading but is kind of localised to a particular particular area or country. It becomes a pandemic when um, the disease spreads to other areas or other parts of the world. If it becomes endemic, then it is a constant presence. And an easy example of that is influenza, the flu. We all live with the flu. I'm pretty sure you've had flu. Um, we all um, have had the flu. It's a continued presence. Influenza kills also. And certainly in the UK, um, if you're over a certain age, every year we are invited to have a vaccination against flu. And every year they tweak the vaccination to adapt it to fit the current strain of flu or whatever strain of flu is out that year, the vaccination is adapted to deal with that and we are um, invited to have a vaccination. That's what happens with the flu. Now, um, scientists are believe that um, we're going to have to learn to live with coronavirus in this same way. Now, I am um, double vaccinated, as is my family. And what I'm about to say next is, might be slightly worrying, so don't cut off without listening to what else I have to say. If you are double vaccinated against coronavirus, 
it really only gives you something like I think it's sixty percent protection. So there's you you are only protected up to sixty percent um, in terms of catching uh, coronavirus. Now, so you might think, well, there you go then. What's the point of being double vaccinated if you've still got a 40% chance of catching it? Please don't think like that because research is also showing that if you are double vaccinated, you are something like 80% um, less likely to be hospitalised and then die. You can check the figures, exact figures, uh, down below in the information that I'm going to leave you, but that's what we're talking about. So being double vaccinated helps you not to be, become hospitalised or die. Okay, now then, um, because of all this new information that's coming out, um, what's going to start happening, and this is going to cut your anxiety by half, at least, if not more, because of what we're finding out now about coronavirus, you see every night on the uh, on our news in the UK and possibly in the US and other parts of the world, we are given the statistic of how many people have um, presented with coronavirus, how many people have been tested positive for coronavirus. And these numbers are going like this. Now, when you listen to that, of course, you become anxious about it. And the danger is that then you don't listen to any more, you just hear that and that sticks with you and that permeates your body and makes you anxious. The thing is, that's not a relevant statistic anymore. The more relevant statistic and what we should be listening to is not how many have got it, but how many people are being hospitalised, how many people are dying, how many of the people who are either hospitalised or die, have underlying conditions, what those underlying conditions are, how many people of those who are hospitalised and die are double vaccinated. That's what we need to know. So, um, apparently we're not going to be given this statistic of how many people have got it. In fact, we're going to stop mass testing because of this thing. Some people have coronavirus and they're not ill, they don't even know they've got it, they don't have any symptoms, and they carry on their life as normal. So we don't need to know that. We need to know the information I've just said. Especially we need to know how many people who, who have been double vaccinated are hospitalised and die, how many people had underlying conditions, and exactly what those underlying conditions are. Now then, once we've got that information, and when you look at the research down below and the articles that I'm going to leave, you'll see that some of these underlying conditions are things like high blood pressure, or diabetes 2, or anxiety-related diseases. These are lifestyle diseases that we can sort out for ourselves. We can ensure that we do not fall into those conditions that are going to put us at risk of being hospitalised or even dying with coronavirus. Now, of course, they're not all lifestyle diseases. If you have a, an underlying medical condition that's got nothing to do with your lifestyle choice, um, well, I was going to say, no, you also need to listen very carefully to what I'm about to say, because even, even you who, who has an underlying condition that's nothing to do with your lifestyle choices, the healthier you are in your own body and the stronger your immune system is, it's going to help you too. So basically, everybody needs to listen to what I'm about to say next. You especially need to listen to what I'm about to say next if you are not double vaccinated. Now, uh, you know, I'm not going to say to you, you need to go and get double vaccinated because I know um, there are people who are unable to do that, are people who don't want to do that, people who are actively against vaccinations, and that's your prerogative. If you are one of those people, you need to listen up even more closely because we need to take responsibility for our own health. And the good thing about this is you can do that. There are things you can do, like I say, to take you out of the risk of being hospitalised or dying with coronavirus. So, for example, if you have blood pressure, there are things you can do to get that down. 
You can start to exercise. If you have diabetes too, you can start to look at your diet. You can take control of these things. You can take control of these things and lessen your risk of hospitalisation and death of coronavirus. And this is ongoing. Now, it will come as no surprise to you if you are a regular on my programme. You must be taking vitamin D. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say you must be. I said I need to suggest that it might be a possibility that would, it would be a good idea if you possibly went to your doctor and asked him to check your vitamin D levels. <sighs> okay, calm down, Christine. We know, and even more recent research has come out to show that if your vitamin D levels are where they should be, you are less likely to be hospitalised with coronavirus. Now, I've, I've done many videos on uh, vitamin D. I will leave a link, um, or you can go to the channel page, Happy Stuff and Fluffs um, YouTube channel page and go to playlists and there's a one two three I think three videos there on vitamin D and yes I am passionate about it um, whatever your state of health whether you have underlying medical conditions um, or not you need to ask your doctor um, to check your vitamin D levels because we know we know evidence is coming through thick and fast that um, your vitamin D levels can help you, um, not just not to be hospitalised with coronavirus, but not to be so ill with it either. So it's a no-brainer. It's something you can do for yourself. But check, of course, with your doctor first. You must do that. So those are the things that you can do. Now, I say to you, stop watching the nightly news, um, you know, for, for this reason, because you do, it, it does make you anxious. And remember what I just said about anxiety-based illnesses putting you at risk you need to you need to do what you can to lower your anxiety levels stop watching the news so often is one of those things and also stop reading newspapers every single day i just want to read you a quotation from mark twain who said the man who doesn't read the paper is uninformed but the man who does is misinformed <laughs> so where does that leave us well, I'm going to tell you. OK, so, yes, read the newspaper. I'm going to leave a link to a newspaper article from The Guardian down below, which uh, talks about um, this herd immunity thing. That's where my information came from. For that, when the newspaper reports on a study that's been done, they will leave you the link to the original study so that you can go to it yourself not just read the newspaper article and rely on what the journalist decided is important for you to hear. You can actually go to the original research paper and read it for yourself. Now, academic papers, I don't care what they're about, are bone dry to read. I mean, they are, and you know, I know, I've been there. Um, they are bone dry to read. So what I suggest you do is go to the research paper read the introduction or the extract at the top and then scoot the way all the way through the paper until you come to the summary, the conclusion or the discussion and read that uh, because that will summarise, of course, the, the actual paper itself. Now, if you see something in that paper, in the summary, that you either find difficult to accept or difficult to understand, then you can find the relevant information in the study to see how they arrived at that conclusion. That will save you a whole lot of wasting dull try time trying to plough your way through an academic paper. Um, valuable though they are, they're very difficult to read. So do that. Okay, so you read your newspaper article, reporting on a study, it will leave you a link to the actual research paper, click through to that link, read the introduction, read the conclusion, it will be called conclusion, discussion or summary, um, to get the information um, from that paper. And then, as I say, if you want to know more about something in that summary, then you can go into the actual paper itself and see how they arrived at that. It's important that you do that because you are putting yourself in control there about the information that you are taking on board. And um, 
you know you're not just sitting there being bombarded by all the bad stuff um that's the way to deal with that so let me see what else i wanted to say to you because it's it's incredibly important obviously um da -da 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 -da. Da, 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 da. yeah just remember um if if you can that anxiety related disease also puts you at risk um, of suffering more with coronavirus so um you need to have a look at that all the good things that we talk about on this channel in fact checking your emotions lowering your anxiety levels eating healthily sleeping all of those things put you in control they put you in control. Now, please give me a thumbs up um, if this has been helpful to you. It might seem something small just to hit that thumbs up, but what it does is it helps me, well, it helps me to continue making videos, um, which I want to continue doing. I don't want to stop. Um, so that really helps if you give me a thumbs up. I hope that's managed to ease your uh, COVID anxiety, even though I've said to you, yes, we're all going to get it. You know, we have the tools to help ourselves um, not to be hospitalised with it. We know what to do to help ourselves not to not to do that. And if you have one of the underlying conditions that then there's nothing you can do about that underlying condition, keep in touch with your doctor, keep asking him what can you do to help yourself and um, ask about your vitamin D. That's essential. And uh, like I say, I, I believe that's how we are going to, on an ongoing basis, deal with coronavirus. What do you think about that? Um, if you have any questions or anything else, put it in the comments box down below. You know, if you ask me to... I The way I work on uh, Happy Stuff and Fluff, I have a plan of what I want to talk to you about. However... If you mention something to me that you're concerned about, you know, as a woman at our time of life, that you're concerned about anything at all, and you either email me or put it in the comments, I do my level best to have that jump the queue of the things that I have planned in order to, uh, you know, in order to put videos onto happy stuff and fluff. So I do listen and I do want to help you. Um, so yeah, whatever you want me to talk about, put it in the comments and I will do it. Okay, that's it. Please remember to watch on Saturday and um, I'll see you next time. And until then, remember that on the Happy Stuff and Fluff, we are getting happy, living longer and growing younger. And I will be doing, um, coming up, a change to my nighttime routine to help us grow younger. So I'll be talking about that soon. In the meantime, take care. Um, do some yoga, do some meditation, 